One of the challenges that basically every boy has these days is they have no idea how to be a king. Lots of princes, lots and lots, or sometimes knaves pretend to be knights. It's another metaphor. Well, how do you become a king? Well, to become a king, you have to learn how to be in right relationship with the queen. <laughs> that is the sine qua non, right? Sine qua non. And you know, what was that thing called? The game or the pickup artist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many boys went through that, which is fine. Like there's a there's a, a, a useful thing. If you found yourself so poorly positioned that you had to do that, do that. But then undo that and actually learn how to stand in right relationship with your opposite number. I now these days, it's very easy. When I find groups of, of young men who are doing interesting stuff, but they either have no women or what I call hot chicks. And I'm like, okay, you're there. And there's only so much you can do. If you want to step up, I will know because you've actually begun the process of making the changes in yourself, which makes it possible for you to call in the one that will be your queen. And there will be a shift in how you show up. By the way, then you can make promises. Then, you, then I can actually trust that you'll be able to make commitments to the long term. Otherwise, not as, not as strong. Short term, you know, intensity, you know, SEAL team. Yeah, you can do that, like very context sensitive, but really hard long term, very hard. But if somebody has found, made that move, now we can start doing stuff. And think about what that means in terms of the context of what you're about, because now you're doing things like child rearing. And if we're talking about the transition of civilization from one operating system to another operating system, then it has to include the whole of life. If it doesn't include birthing children and raising human beings that are themselves not destroyed by this machine that we've found ourselves making and participating in, or for that matter, dying, you know, elders dying and not dying in what? Oh, this travesty, travesty. Alone, isolated, afraid, no longer connected to legacy or lineage. Oh, this is a horror show. Well, cure that and recognize the benefit to your cohort, which is the same as mine, more or less, of the vertical. You know, how do you right, how do you create right relationship with your elders, or at least those who are older than you? Sadly, many of the people who are older than us chose not to become elders. Mm -hmm. But um, and how do you create right relationship with those who are younger, all the way down? And how do you recognize that stewardship of all other humans is part of your journey and finding the right way? Now, you can't take responsibility for those who are not yours to take responsibility for. But you know, when I was playing with this kid on the beach, not my son. I don't even really know him very well. But that moment was a moment of stewardship, a moment of showing up as a person, a human, in relationship to another human and saying, okay, in this moment, this is the right gift. This is what I can give. And what I can learn is what's it like to play with a seven-year-old in this game who's naturally a better player at this game than I am. And so I can be aware of how the shift works, but once we actually begin to move into the playing of it, obviously he was masterful and I was a novice and I was learning from him. Joe See how Norm? we dropped into tradition pretty quick? Yeah, man. Uh, it makes me think of something yeah. else Joe Norman told me. You know, he's a homesteader in New Hampshire. You know, he he walks the walk. And uh, he told me, he's like, you know, it's just an amazing thing to get in touch with the low frequency cycles of the earth, right? Like, slow. Amen. And, and as you're talking about this, it... it <laughs> just reminds me of why in the past uh, our leaders thought it might be useful for the leaders to be landowning patriarchs. I get it, right? It's that connectivity to the whole process and thinking about legacy and thinking about the future. And on this issue of being isolated, disconnected, and not able to relate properly to women, creating a generation of lost boys. It's really, it's really happening and it's sad. And it goes back to so many, the culture war and all these things, I think that are purposefully degrading it. And so we're trying to actually have a response to that uh, and trying to, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Not reprioritize, but sort of re glamorize this idea of like having a family and raising kids and building a community and getting connected to the earth. It's incredible to me that how many of our members in the LO are either currently uh, homesteading on the way to homesteading. We've had a number of guys 
sell their condos in the city and move. We've got a concentration of guys in Montana. We've got a concentration of guys in Eastern Tennessee, sort of that Appalachian, mm. that Appalachia area, Southwest Virginia. Beautiful, right? I myself have been looking, looking in West Virginia myself. I'm ready. I'm ready to go a hundred percent. It all, it all came together when I was watching Homestead Rescue during Corona lo lockdowns. I mean, I joke, but you know, it's just funny how things come to you at the right time. And, uh, I am certainly ready to disconnect from this urban lifestyle and reconnect with that. I I've come from that background. Part, part of one of the most formative experiences of my life as a child was two 30 day outward bound trips where I was just mm. out there, just out there you know, uh, 100 miles north of the Boundary Waters in Minnesota, like not even in the area, like just in the Canadian wilderness, you know, it's just incredible stuff. And in fact, uh, we've partnered with Outward Bound in the Liminal Order and they do leadership trainings for us and we're taking guys on us. We got a week long trip coming in September and then another one coming. And it's, uh, it's just fascinating for me when I can just pull my whole life, pull my whole life together into something very productive like this. Mm. You got something there? So think about this. Yeah, think about this transition. Um, like what is true wealth? What is true wealth? And one of the very interesting learnings is something like true wealth is to have been given the ability to actually take responsibility. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, I would say that one of the child, what, what, what makes one a lost boy is that you are not actually given the opportunity to truly take responsibility and to not carry that which is yours to carry is the most debasing life and, and the, the world that has substituted you know a lambo for a family is deeply profane yeah and by the way grotesque like anyone who has lived that life for even just a moment knows in their heart it is grotesque it is nauseating um, so to seek wholeness, to seek wholesomeness is yes. And in many cases, this requires a new place. You know, the, the cities are not amenable to wholesomeness in the least, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, okay, new place. I mean, honestly, I'm quite likely to be doing something like homesteading here in Hawaii. Could very well be. I'm certainly looking for where's the right place. I took my RV trip in the October in the last like three months of last year, traveled through many of the places you mentioned. Didn't get to know Montana because that's a long way <laughs> uh, and cold in October. <laughs> um, but also not. So here's, I think, I'm going to flip the script. All right. Because it's nice. We're talking blockchain, crypto, tech, innovation. Yeah. yeah. A traditional guy. Good news, bad news. Good news. Homesteading, wholesomeness. Yes. Bad news. Small family farm by yourself? No. It's just not going to work. Yeah. It's not how it works. You're just going to get eaten. You'll just get evaporated. You maybe for a few years might be able to have a glance of nice before the shitstorm of the big changes that are coming destroy everything that you've tried to protect and you will be helpless to protect it because you've made a very bad choice. You've been very stupid and selfish. No. Part of the world, part of the whole, right? Everybody has to begin the process of learning how to participate in constructing this wholesomeness together. If the whole world does not rediscover wholesomeness, at least not enough, right? critical mass. And it doesn't have to be that many. As you say, files, we talked about Neil Stevenson's term. Yeah. Strong enough files who are able to support each other and take advantage of the unprecedented power associated with these innovative capacities and so homestead building new kinds of crypto tech mm, interesting homestead would say a i think what would happen is you were to take a um, two thousand person intentional homestead that was simultaneously a kind of co-working innovation hub and a permaculture uh, environment. Right? So you had a combination of people whose vocation was how to take care of humanness, like 
how to help kids be well raised. And so everybody sees that their own kids are actually well supported and growing well. So you have that feeling of groundedness and, and ease that you're not worried about that. And by the way, that you're, in this case, if you have kids, you probably have a female partner of some sort. She's also not worried about that, which means that your relationship can be healthy and strong so that you're supported by that as well. The quality of food, the quality of the water that you're drinking, nature that you're in is alive and healthy and can support you. You stay grounded. You can actually get the insights that you can only get when you can go for a walk in nature, listen to the sounds of the birds, listen to the water, get the insight. And then you come back and you happen to be one whose vocation is associated with innovation. Well, now you'll be powerful, very powerful. You can really put your energy into that and not get burned out or not get short-sighted or not get um, ultimately defeat yourself. Like what happens oftentimes is you are forcing yourself into something, but a big part of yourself is saying, this is brutal, terrible, like I'm in pain and feel unnourished. And so you actually, uh, what's this called? Self-defeating, self-sabotage. Many people actually don't realize that they're self-sabotaging because they are not taking care of the wholeness of their self. That's what self-sabotage is. Like some part of yourself is like, man, you're fucking me. So eventually I'm just going to have to pull the rug out from underneath you. The life you're living is not a wholesome life and I'm part of you. And I'm telling you right now, at a certain point, it's not going to work. So I'm going to pull the plug because it's got to end. You've got to actually be living a whole life. But if you could create a homestead like that and it had that level of con consideration of all the different elements, right? the, the, the deep liminal space of where core values actually come from, which we could call the sacred properly, that holds everyone living in that way and reminds people and helps people heal back when they come off the path. And then the actual livingness, all the aspects of human you know, conviviality, breaking bread together you know, and taking care of the land together and building together so the buildings are actually human scale and have that felt sense of like being part of a, of a human uh, community. And then for those whose vocation is oriented in that more outward direction, they are now honorably doing so and can know what the value is. You know, imagine that when you create value, you come back and you sit and you see this thriving community that are being supported by the value you're creating, how that feeds you. Right? That's, oh, that's true wealth, right? True wealth, not whatever this fucking bullshit is that money can buy. Which I've is never death. felt I've never felt wealthier in my life than I have in the last few years after we started the liminal order. Sometimes I feel like I'm cheating. The fact that I get to mm. go out there and do all of this work and pour myself into something where I tangibly, visibly, concretely, repeatedly see massive positive changes in other men and their families. I mean, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it, it helps people remember that there was never really a dichotomy between work and entertainment. Mm. Both are profane. Right? It is vocation. Just when you are actually living a wholesome life and getting honorable work, when you have true responsibility and you're carrying it out, you're in vocation. And now you are doing things that create value in the world, but you are also feeling neutrified by what you're doing. It's separating them and say, oh, no, no. I'm going to go do some bullshit job and work to get enough money to go take a vacation so I can entertain. And both are actually killing you. 